Hey guys, today we'll be going to Azerbaijan to meet a coward aka a school shooter who felt the greatest way to leave earth was to take innocent lives alongside with him. Farda Gadarov, born on December 8, 1980 in Georgia was actually of Armenian descent and had later spent most of his life in Russia, Podolska. I wish there was more information about his life there, but we will soon get into an article that I had read about his speculated time spent there. But either way, he had abruptly come to Baku, Azerbaijan for unknown reasons. An official from his village had stated he was quite anti-social and wouldn't leave his home for the duration he was there. And now we all know what BS he was doing in there now. On April 9, 2009 Gatorov had entered the Azerbaijan Oil State Academy's second building and first shot at a security guard then janitor, then opened fire on students in a lecture room. The shooting was so intense that it was speculated initially that there were two gunmen. I saw how he shot my fellow student, Alavertiev said. There is only one exit on the first floor, and the second floor is too high to jump. Everyone was running here and there. My colleague tried to disarm him and went toward him, but he shot him, then we ran away. Gatorov had climbed his way from the first to the sixth floor, shooting anyone and everyone, aiming at their head. After the rampage, there were 12 victims and 13 injured. At the grown age of 29, this dunce had killed the dreams of numerous children and families before taking his own. A year after, the police caught three men and jailed them for abetting Gatorov on his crime and charges consisting of conspiracy, terrorism, smuggling and possession of illegal weapons. Though, the supposed perpetrators later stated how they were tortured to sign forms and give false testimonies, but prosecutors say the medical examinations didn't back up their statements. One of the convicted explained in court on July 15, 2010 how he was hung naked and electric shocks were applied to his genital area to give in his statement. They were also originating from Georgia, a Vasari ethnic possibly being the reason they were easy targets by the police, to quickly close up this case and settle the angry relatives after this crime as no questions were left answered after his immediate suicide. But it seemed like most evidence leaned towards them. One of the lawyers of the defendants had brought up an Armenian man called Mardun Kamajan who was one of the people said to have actually financed and masterminded his plan. But being a Georgia resident, Interpol was brought in and I guess they never did their job like always. If Azerbaijani journalists can interview Mardun Gumashian, then why can't the law enforcement bodies of Azerbaijan find him until now? Stated Arif Yunus, a human activist, after numerous journalists had visited Mardun to get his side of the story. After the trial in Baku and lack of evidence against him, it seemed law enforcement couldn't care less to go after him. The Makarov pistol Gatorov had used, originated from and was produced in the Soviet Union but after its 1991 fall, continued in Russia. It of course could have been manufactured and licensed soon after in different countries. But either way, Yuzir Jafarov a Azeri military expert found it out of the norm for someone so inexperienced could kill and injure so many people with this type of pistol. Prior to the deadly shooting, the president of Azerbaijan had gone to Brussels on April 29 for a gas agreement conference and returned to Baku the next day and what a coincidence for Gatorov to attack an oil and gas college the day of the president's arrival back. Gatorov was also apparently known for attending a school that trained divers and saboteurs in Russia during his time in Podolsk, indicating he could have been a Russian agent. From this angle of the story, Gatorov definitely could have been a brainwashed puppet of Russia, and alongside his persona of being a proclaimed lone wolf and saying his every step was death was easily a way to remove the blame from Russia but to his mental state. After Gatorov's death, even his father refused to see his son at the morgue, stating I refuse from a son who committed such a crime. Nor come to the site where the trial was going on for the four alleged helpers of his son while he still resided in Russia. Based and Sigma Dad ASF, 